Hey, welcome to She Safe from Rebound on the Rebound Basketball YouTube channel, home to Rebound's live shows, interviews, and so much more. Let's say the last two seasons, this being the third season we've done the All Stars, the game and the event as a whole has been live streamed from our YouTube channel for those who couldn't make it in the venue. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, be sure to like, to share, and subscribe and keep up to date with all our goes on. I'll also put in the bar here links to our Instagram page where you can keep up to date with everything All Stars, but also everything British Basketball too. As we have two channels on social media, one for the event, one for our general content. This chat, this channel is uh, also hosting the All Star Draft. This video, um, the 2024 Rebound All Stars in its third season with each year having the draft on our channel. So the first year it's been pre-recorded. Um, uh, we're really excited for you to see who the players are picked. Without further ado, let's crack on to the first Rebound All-Stars draft with myself and my two wonderful captains, Elaine Training and Harriet Wilhelm, who have both had amazing seasons. That will be followed. That will follow. Sorry. That will be followed by the men's where I'm joined by my two captains, Hakeem Silla and Joe Campbell. Sit back, relax, and let's find out who our all star captains have picked for this year's 2024 Rebound All Stars event. Good evening, welcome. Christian's Rebound here. Really excited for the third year of the All Stars. We're recording this on the evening time after both these ladies have done workouts and group meetings for their teams head of a busy NBL schedule but further delay my two all-star captains need very little introduction reigning nbl national cup mvp harriet wellham and also last year's mvp in the national cup elen training for 10 20 cavaliers at ipswich respectfully how are you guys how how sweet is your end very good very good very good i'm good thank you <laughs> It's great to have you here. I'm really excited. I think the All Stars is such a great product to really sort of shine a light on the um, the work and effort you guys put on and off the court, and it's been an amazing spectacle. But we're still in the regular season, so let's talk a bit about the race for the title. Harry, obviously, you've had a two year hiatus from the NBA action in France, and you come back. You're in the pole. <laughs> At the moment, how has it been for you returning back to Ipswich? It's been good. Um, it wasn't quite what I was expecting. I weren't expecting us to be top of the league, to be honest with you. I said to Nick when I returned, I was just like, if we finish top four and get a good cup run, I'd be happy. And the fact that we were able to win the cup was a massive bonus. And now we're hopefully looking to get the treble. That That's the big goal now which looking back at the start of the season definitely wasn't on the cards but now that is what we're eyes on the prize what was on the cards was it just the fact that you're maybe sort of playing it cool because it does look quite a strong roster especially yourself having that title pedigree what were the aims going into the season like I said just a just a good cup run and finish top four because we always play well under pressure so any knockout game we, we feel like we're good at um put ourselves under pressure a little bit but to be constantly good all season is is hard no matter what team you play for them with the um the young girls we've got who are also playing on Wednesdays you just never know with load management with injuries touch wood but no we've been very lucky and everyone keeps developing as well like they, they're playing every day at the academy I've been lucky to have Danny back as well. She returned unexpectedly. Um, we've had Liv Partridge as well come back from injury dur during the season. So it's just gone from strength to strength for us and we're, we're in a really good position at the moment. And sort of talk about strength to strength, Elaine, Ted Heidi Cavaliers, 
unfortunate, sorry, unfortunate when it's up to Ipswich in the National Cup, but still hotly in that title race, which isn't really over. How was last weekend's win at AU? That was a big game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a big game and we did quite good uh, in terms of like we starting the game at five because most of the team was late due to the, you know, the traffic on the road. So we literally start the game at five. And so we did we did good, like actually. And also we get like um, Hayley, uh, she got injured two weeks ago at Solent. So we also lose like a, a good player like inside. So we lose some height as well and some strength inside. Uh, but I think we're still in good position to be like, maybe to compete for the first place of the league. So we still have a couple of games uh, left. So let's see. Everything, I think everything is possible. We have like, probably we are like four teams, probably in, um, looking for the first place. So let's see. Yeah, I, also, I, I love looking at stats and table to my little <laughs> records. And obviously Ipswich on 16-3. Yourselves and Brent aren't far behind. Total eleven five. Are you a ten? Probably not. Don't jump up to the top four now, but it's all to play for. And then, then you got playoffs, so this is really good. Mm-hmm. What was the aim coming into the season, Elen? Was it to sort of really challenge at the top end, or was it sort of consolidate? What were some of the goals this year? Um, so definitely to make it to the playoffs. You know, we have a revenge. Um, compared to last season when we lost the first game. So definitely playoffs is like our main goal. Um, the cup game, actually, cup, being like in cup final for the second time, what unexpected. Uh, it was like a big reward for our work. And unfortunately, we lost. But it was a close game. It was a nice game, actually, to play. And let's see. Let's see next, next year. Probably next year, we're trying to make it like three in a row. And yeah. Definitely. As you both said, there's a lot of Barcelona really excited about before the uh, rebound also on the 12th of May. Uh, 12th of May, difficult to try and get in the schedule and enough time for the imports. But 12th of May, location to be confirmed. I'm really hoping to confirm that this week. It's been the straight to find the location that is free with lots of clubs having universities that need it for um, exams and other factors involved. But we're almost there, so it's really exciting. Let's get to it. That's what we're here. It's up at nine o'clock, past my bedtime almost. I'm joking. It, it's it's evening, Monday night motivation. Uh, before this, I need to flip the coin. Elen uh, will win first pick. So, <laughs> without any further delay, let's go to the draft show. What everyone's talking about. <laughs> um. Okay. I feel like a lot of pressure now. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want like everyone be angry and mad about me with my first pick, so I'm just like trying to be tactical and practical. Um, so my first pick of the 2024 All Star Game will be um, Liv Foster from Ipswich. Wow, we're going big, you know. Don't want to... that's what I was hoping someone would pick off another team. Last few years we've had people play as safe, right? Like leaving the uh the uh, players on their team to their respective captains, but that's a big move. And uh, let's see what Harriet's first pick is. Oh, sorry. Go... sorry. No, I was just thinking because she's like, I'm starting like to build my team as I need some point guard and guard because I obviously bring the size. So um, my tactic is like creating like my team per position. So bringing some speed. She's like, a, she's quick. She's a good shooter. Uh, she has a good IQ. So literally, she can score and dribbling and passing. So she's like a good good asset. Yeah, she off to D one college this summer, I believe. So it's only like one of the last times to see her play in <laughs> British basketball till where she goes to next after D one college. But her stock and seal is only get up and up. She's an amazing talent. Really excited to have her as a two time All Star. Harriet, who are you uh, picking for your first pick? So, you've taken an Ipswich player, and I'm going to take a Tennis yeah. Valley player, and I'm going to go for Kat Goldsby. I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've I've been playing against Kat for quite a few years, and she's always been a great player, and it would just be fun to actually play with her instead of against her. So, now I'm looking forward to sharing the same colour kit as her this time. <laughs> Yeah, makes sense. I never got to with Kat. Like, it was the same last year, so I'm never going <laughs> to... 
No, good choice. Definitely a good choice. Like, I mean, catch she can do. She's a bucket, so good pick. Yeah, she can do everything as well. So fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, right. Second pick in the 2024 okay. All Star draft. Second pick, uh, I will go for um, Lindsay from Reading. Lindsay Cleary. Um, we played last year together. So actually, I was in her team. Um, she's also like a good player. She can do everything. She can drive. She's not a friend. Like she crosses the boards. Uh, she's like a good player. Like she has IQ. She has experience. Um, so yeah, definitely a, a good, a good player for me. Yeah, I, I think, think. Yeah, I really like this player. Really hard to defend in the paint. Really physical. I see someone she's trained with men, and you yeah. definitely see why she mix it up. And she's you know really good post player as well. So really interesting team so far. Yeah, and she brings some height as well. So you know, mm -hmm. I need someone to go for rebound too. So Lynn. <laughs> 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 So my next pick, I am going to be biased, but I think she's one of the most improved players in the league and I see her every day. So I am going to say that, but I'm going to take Christabel. <laughs> she She's just come on leaps and bounds this season. And the fact that she's doing it in under 19s and senior level, she she's definitely one to look out for when she goes overseas to Gonzaga. She'll be really exciting. Yeah, she's a good pick. Um, okay, she was on my list too. So now I need to. Be... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I think so... we've got to have a look at your scout report. So we all take pairs for this. <laughs> Elaine's got like NBA draft pictures and probably got little <laughs> fact sheets about them. Yeah. <laughs> then I get some combination with different, you know. Yep. That <laughs> is so good. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so unprepared. <laughs> um, okay, so next one, third pick. Okay, also I'm, maybe I'm biased because I play with her. Um, and also because you pick the other TVC player, I'm going to take the last one. So I'm going with Chin. Um, obviously, Chin, she's like, she has some speed. She can jump. She has some height. Like, she can also do everything. She's rebounding. She's fast. She, you know, she brings, like, shooting. She has, I think, probably she's on the top uh, three-point shooter of the league currently. So... And I love playing with her, so I'm really like... She's it. very underrated, very yeah. underrated. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So um, I'm happy to play with her again. So I will go with Shane. I'm really excited to have her back to say, give you an idea of a coaching um, selection process. We invite all the D1 to be NBL coaches to make selections. We had a really good return. I think eight of the 12 or 13 teams replied to picks. And it was great to see Shane because I know... When we said it last year, there was a lot of say, why would she select it? And I felt that she is a very great player and deserves to be a two-time All-Star, almost a three-time All-Star, but it just wasn't to be. I think coached in a different direction, but she's definitely been picked this year, so that's great to see. And she's super athletic, so yeah. She's going to be a football for your team. <laughs> so uh, my next pick, I am... Um gonna go for a bit of a throwback used to play with her at under under 13 east of england i'm gonna go jess davies from brent bulls another player that's just gonna be big get rebounds can score can shoot she can do it all so um yeah that is definitely my next player okay Hmm, you get some hype now. <laughs> I, I needed it. <laughs> um, okay, so Jeff, some next pick. Uh, I go with Christina from Bristol. Um, because our game against Bristol was really, she was really, she was really a good player. Like she was really 
pain. <laughs> she's doing like good offense. She can play one on one. She can shoot. She's really aggressive. She can uh, crash the board. So she's really like so she's doing a bit of everything. Um, so definitely, I would rather I would rather play with her than against her. Against a hundred, <laughs> <laughs> and she kills us all on her head fake up and under as well. Right, my next player. I'm gonna go for Felicia from Cola. Yeah. Another big presence. Very exciting to see where she goes. She's got so much potential as well. Mm. Yeah, Cola just keep have like a fair battle talent. It's like a different squad to last year almost, but still just as talented at both senior and junior level. They dominated both junior senior when you were gone in France, but you look at guys mm -hmm. to break that. I think they're amazing talent. I think she, for me, she's definitely the top five in the NBL for junior talent for big things. 100%. Really excited to see where she goes. Mm. Okay, I'm saying it's Felicia. You're quite a tall team now. Mm, Christabel, Felicia, <laughs> Jess. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my next player mm, is Rocky from Brent. Mm. Because she's, for me, she's kind of the, one of the best PJ, she's like, I think she's like the top player with assists of the league currently. Uh, she has experience, like her IQ is great. I used to play with her at Brent, so really need someone like to create like the game and to, to, to run the floor and she's really, she's really good. So I will go with Rocky. I bet it'd be nice, nice to break up attention to say both of you guys be rivals on the court as we hit towards playoff season, Brent, Ipswich and TBC, all that top end and so it'd be nice to share the floor with them after taking it all seriously. And also we played last year together like, you know, in Lindsay, Cleary's team, so it'd be nice to play again together. All-star chemistry there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we won last year, so, you know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, my next pick I'm going to come back to Ipswich and I'm going to take Yasmin Edwards. She has got an engine for days, so she'll be the one that gets out and runs for us. Um, ridiculously athletic. Again, I think she's just had an absolute breakout season, especially in Division 1. So um, she's another one going overseas next, next season. So, yeah, Yasmin Edwards. Yeah. You definitely put that puzzle together. I was about to say, you said we doing all the running for your side and keeping you guys filled with uh, buckets of good playmaking, and she's definitely fits a ticket there. Hundred percent. So many Ipswich players in your team. <laughs> <laughs> I would have had Liv as well if you didn't pick her. <laughs> um. Okay. So next pick. I will go with uh, Erin Fowell from Lesborough. That was going to be my next. Um, because she's like a strong player. Like she really likes strong. She can also shoot. She's not afraid to shoot like threes or two point or like long shots. She she's like a good fighter. So definitely like a good inside presence and also outside. So it's going to be like a strong team. Yeah, the All-Stars missed her last season with injury, but she's still there cheering on her team from the bench. And I know she's very excited to be fingers crossed injury free and on the floor doing what she does best. Yeah, she was she was supposed to play last year. That's what. Yeah, she got injured. Uh, okay. so that, I think it was in the I've played off qualified solo or regular season. It was quite close to the end of the season when it happened. And uh yeah, it's not a nice thing to see players missing out to the injury, especially towards that end of the season when it's what you've been playing up to all year, the playoffs, and that's, yeah, the all stars should obviously a new event at this point. So, my next pick, 
I am going to go Irene from Manchester. She is another exciting young talent. I feel like I've gone for quite a young team, but yeah, she's definitely one to look out for. I mean, she's exciting, she's quick, she's athletic. So hopefully the more running other people do, the less running I have to do. So um, yeah, she'll be another good addition, I think. And her and the missus, they do really well. Newly promoted side and they're, they're competing the best in D1. What makes them such a great team? They're, they're the most improved team by far, 100%. We we beat them by 70 here and we only beat them by 12 at their place. And they're, they're competing with, they were competing with Brent. They were competing with um, Kohler as well. The, the coach is doing an amazing job for the, with them, but they're all round chemistry and they've got senior players mixing with these junior players. I just think it's a real good mix and definitely the most improved team this season. I hope they get a good push in the playoffs. Yeah, the team completely changed from the beginning of the season. Like the last are amazing. So. so good point. I go with the other Manchester player. I go with Ray. Uh, uh, Ray, she's like doing everything. She's like a good, huge player, but it's only on the last couple of games we can really see like she can score, she can like, get rebounds, she can drive, she can play 1-1, one -one, she can play under the basket. So she can, yeah, she's like really a good player with experience and IQ. And I'm also, I'm playing with her actually in the Maxi GB team. So we used to play together. We played in Spain last year. We're going to play in Italy this summer. So I love playing with her. Like we know, we know each other like quite well. So yeah, I see this team chemistry is creeping up and up with every pick. It's everyone's played with a captain in some form or other. Uh, it's back <laughs> in the end of junior days or with Maxi GB yeah. or in summer, those fallout connections and what's not. It's like a friendly game. This part. Yes. <laughs> so my next pick. It's a tough one. I'm gonna go. Rianne from ARU. She was she was amazing against us. I think she's a quality player, and um, yeah, it'll be exciting to actually share the court with her. That was my next choice. <laughs> um, so many. Okay, two left. Um, to my next player. Uh, is Glory from Cola. Uh, she's like she's a young player, but she's doing great. Like she she can play like really well. She can score. She can drive. So I think she's really a, a talented young player. And then I will have Daisy Porter from Loughborough. Again, played well against us. So. It'll be good to actually share the court instead of playing against them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited now. Looking at my team, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, the good teams. Obviously, we've had two withdrawals recently. Um, lots of you would have seen, but. With Shane Walters made the step up to the London Lions WBL team. She got her first buckets of the weekend. Wish all the best. And I know she was looking forward to the All Stars, but duty comes and there's no bigger one at the moment. The British basketball playing for London Lions ladies as they make in history. As we wish them all the best. Um, and then obviously Michelle Turner, for personal reasons, once we were able to placements, the girls would draft the, the final place of their All Stars and will announce coaches. In, Due to I'm sure you mentioned Mystics Rob Fairley will probably be on the phone with myself to try to get him and all the coaches he's had an amazing season TBC to about the rest of them but I thought let's finish off that all-star chat and say appreciate you guys coming up especially after training or team talks you learn it's your second all-star you know we obviously got the five of your girls from last year picked some up again what are some of the bits that you really enjoyed last year at the all-stars um for me, it was quite new because I never 
you know, I've never been to the All-Star game. It's not really common, like, back to France. Um, like, I really love, like, all the events, like, all the entertainment, the contest, skill contest, three-point shot, like, also watching the men's game, like, all the event was amazing and really well organized. Um, having all the team, like, playing also with nice, nice, like, player. We all compete during the season against each other, so it's really great to play at some point together. Um except during like summer or three X three contest, but it's really like a great event and I really enjoy it. That's why when I, you asked me to be captain, I was surprised first, but then I was like, <laughs> really happy to to be part of this event because it's like a great job. Uh, you're well to say it, we just, I always try to think how to do it most constructively and it just made sense to the two most efficient players. I know last year, Last thing about it, you know, you got MVP in the cup final. I was like, oh, should we go there? We went against, I was like, if I had a second thought, I was like, no, definitely get Elen back in and, as tapped in. And um, obviously, Harry, it's going to be your first All Star. Congratulations. And I hope you really enjoy it. Obviously, Liv has played it before, and you might have seen the others on YouTube. What are some of your thoughts headed to your first All Stars? Yeah, I'm excited. It's quite annoying that. The first year I was abroad was the first year that you brought it in, but <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> but um, no, I'm really excited. And like we've said before, it's exciting to actually play with these people instead of playing against these people. And for me, I've been in, in the league quite a long time. So to actually be able to share the court with them is really exciting. And, and it's great for British basketball and the uh, National Basketball League. It's awesome for that. Yeah, I mean, I, I I try not to take credit with BBL now bringing their All-Stars in and maybe they saw what it did to the NBL level. But I think for me, I just thought it's it's like a showcase event. It it just adds an extra flavour to the league. I know a lot of people are interested in the NBA. I've got my Sohan shirt, so I can't say I'm not. But <laughs> my first introduction to the NBA was the All-Stars. I thought it was quite a fun event back when I first watched it. Less so now, but that's a different conversation. <laughs> I just thought... It's so much you need a fun event to drag new eyes to the sport. And that's why I was excited to sort of take it away from Sona to another place to get new people who might not have seen the All Stars in to watch it. So I'm really excited and say it's enough about the players. So again, thank you so much for coming on and discussing it. Before I go, I know both of you got well back teams. Is there a message you've got to your fans? I know. We're approaching playoff time, and a lot of guys go on the road now. There's not many home days left. How it was the message you'd like to say to the Ipswich family before we head into playoff season? Uh, just thank you for, for start for having our back through everything. Obviously, we we uh, had loads of travelling supporters come to Manchester to see the cup final, and um, we're quite lucky in the fact that we have got a, a couple of home games left, and we get great support wherever we go. So. Just stick with us and hopefully we'll be there at another final. That's what we're aiming for. But obviously we, we've got some tough games coming up and we'll just take each game as it comes. But yeah, looking forward to this most exciting end to a season that I've had in a long time. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, same for you, Len. Obviously you guys probably aim for another final. You've got a passionate set of fans yourself. What's the message to the Cavaliers faithful as we approach crunch season? Yeah, um, so thank you for following us this season and keep supporting the club. Uh, we have now like three women's team, so it keeps growing and the coaching staff is doing great uh, job and it's amazing. So thanks to Kat, Kiwan, Rob and Faith, they are doing like a lot for the women's basketball at CBC. And we still have a couple of games going, uh, four, I think, four left. Try to make it to the final for the playoffs, maybe another final, so the same final as the cup finals against Ipswich, maybe. Fingers uh, crossed. <laughs> <laughs> it's working hard to get there and we appreciate the support, so thank you. And obviously, thank you everyone for taking part in the NBL. There's a lot, like Elen's mentioned a few people behind the scenes who you see them on the court, but you know, Coach Tat, Robin, they, they do a lot of hours behind the scenes to help get the girls ready. So there's a lot of volunteers <laughs> and Coach Chiazzi we do a lot of hard work. It's appreciated that we definitely see WNBL growing. And I think the way it's grown is making it more competitive. I'd say, like, Ipswich may or may not be flying away with it, but everyone else isn't too far behind. And second to fifth is anyone's game. So 
It's great to see, and hopefully that will continue to grow year on year. Again, thank you, Dev, for coming on this evening. I hope you have a lovely week, and catch you all soon in two months' time. Stay safe, and see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Wow, what a show for ladies with great picks there. Really looking forward to that game as well as the men's. Stick around to the end of the video. I'll give you an update of all things All-Stars as we know it as of Sunday the 17th of March. Right, let's hear, let's go and see who the men are picking for the men's 2024 Rebound All-Stars game. Hello, Jenny Eva Christie's Rebound is the second part of our 2024 Rebound All-Stars draft show. Really excited for this one. Two great captains here. Um, I hope you're well, first and foremost. So tonight is a draft show for the men's side of things. Uh, joined with me is Hakeem Silla and Joe Campbell, two individuals who know each Dutch and both worthy candidates for Captain C. Captain C was picked as two most efficient players in the league just after Christmas. These guys have a great season. How are you guys? Um, thanks for coming on the show, especially Friday night recording, busy week, especially busy week ahead. First, Hakeem, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much for the lovely intro and for the invite. You know, it's an honor always to be part of. Like, first of all, we appreciate everything you do around the league. It's very noticeable and you know, keep 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 the hard work going. And moving on to myself, I'm all good. Just got back from an international break. You know, like you say, the tough week coming ahead. So it's been a it's been a really focused week. Like we're trying to gear up towards the playoff now. So yeah, all good. And oh, Jared, have we lost you? Know you got there. One of the most reliable guards oh, in the league. Like um, nominee for assist team for the season. He's having a breakout year. Worthy captaincy. Joe, thanks for coming on. I hope you're well and glad to be named captain this year. Yeah, again, um, thank you for having me. It's an honour. Again, same as the team said. You did uh, big things for basketball England. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know about the most unguardable guard in the league. You know, I came across some tough guys already. You know. I'm not going to say names. I'll say names later on when I start picking. We'll get to that. Um, but yeah, um, you know, honor, honor to be picked this year um, and to be back again. So thank you for that. You're welcome. You're both um, very humble. And yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. Sorry, I mean, I say yeah, you're both very well, humble guys. Well. And it's great, great to have no, you apart. Um, so, Jones, you know, great to see you've got a bit more of a leadership role in the team. How's it been with you guys with uh, Lotus this year? Um, you know what? No, I think this year, I think we've got a really good team this year. Um, I think we started off really well. Started off very, very well. I mean, after Christmas, we've, we've gone through a little bit of a rough patch. Um, but and honestly, I couldn't tell you why. I don't know if it's. I don't really know what it's to do with. Um, but you know, we're still fighting for a playoff spot. Um, we're still, we still can make the playoffs. Um, so these next couple of games now we just got to lock in. Everyone's got to lock in and just just focus on getting the win and getting some getting back on the roll. Yeah, no, of course it's a very competitive season. I did my little playoff graphic race. There is that yeah. eighth spot for you guys to hit. I'm sure you'll be there fighting for it. Hakeem, you sort of hinted about a big weekend this weekend. The you know against Derby and I think it's a double header weekend as well, isn't it? Reading. That's it. Right. That'll be on Saturday, Reading on that's Sunday. It. That's mm -hmm. it. If uh, Carlsberg did a uh, double header weekend, that'll definitely be one combination. How's preparation been this week for you guys? Um, so basically, I have all the standard has always been, you know, high. Whether we're playing like people in the playoffs or not in the playoffs picture. So we always set the standard high. But there is an element of, I'm not going to lie for revenge a little bit, how the first leg went. So there is that extra 
um, the actual motivation that you took you take personally as a competitor, as a player. So other than that, we prepared for every team. We prepare for Derby the way we prepare for every team. Like really good structure. Like the coach Mark, uh, he's very demanding. So, but definitely this week is special because also it's still we still we still believe like there is a window to to win the league. So we never that's the objective when you play for him or each every season. So. Thus, uh, this week is crucial because we're playing two really, really good teams. Huh? But we're looking forward to it. Like the guys were relaxed uh, and focused as usual during practice. So that's where we are. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a fair brag. Like you say, the title's still there. I think Derby got yourselves read in two tough away games and Bradford, who, like Nottingham, are sort of a team that may not be top four contenders, but you really want to face them on their days. They're very tough. Absolutely, absolutely. Reading, Bradford, not Nottingham, those are the teams, you know what I mean? And any day they can beat you. They have the talent for it. The league is more competitive this year. So so opposite to what Joe was saying, we started a bit rough because we had that transition from last year having a super stack team to, you know, more of a, a, a lesser <clears throat> on a lesser degree a tiny bit this year. So we had a lot of new pieces that we had to put in place. So just before Christmas, we were hitting our groove coming heading into the new year we were really confident so we're trying to get back on that wave again and close out the season strong but yeah it's been it's been a fun season like you said it's very competitive every team is like you play any team any day Newcastle like there's so many tough teams this year which makes it fun and on the topic of fun I, I saw you in the international break uh you, you, with Gilly, you uh got into some a bit of horseplay of a different kind how was the um, international week for you? Um, the international break is always uh, a, a different experience, honestly. Like, you know, the team is kind enough. I'm always grateful that they call me from time to time. But due to work commitment and then the commitment to the club is tough. Like, like other pro during the week, they have a break during the international yeah, the NBL we don't, so which been a lot. But I can understand now a lot of players go for international duty when they're um on Division One. But the BBL guys they do most all the time. But it's really interesting to be around people that are doing this for a living every single day. It's there, so it's intense. Be around coach that are experienced and having a different role than I have here. To be honest with you, like the adaptation to that. Um, it's somewhat different where there you're more of a role player you have people that are really good you have one job one specific task every time you come in you need to execute that so that learning curve helps me understand my teammates as well on this side like that knows like when you come in you have to do exactly this but you know it, 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 was, it was always fun we lost all three games which was a shame but we have a second leg again uh, we're really confident that we're going to qualify for the Afro basket next year which I think I want to do but we'll see so now keep working the team will keep working they'll put me in the best position to do so well i'm sure we're all behind you say it's great to see that the nbl has some players in international pedigree in terms of like that role player role does it help you understand how maybe some of your head teammates are in terms of understand their role in the communication side of things so you do okay look actually i know as a role player, for, oh, I need this, I need to be doing this more for my guys. What sort of things have uh, prepped the cross? Well, you nail it right on the coffin. Like, that's exactly oh, it. So, <laughs> yeah. No, but that's it. So, I did not understand some of the guys, not from time to time, way before, when they come in, you know, why are they trying to do this? While there, I understand I've, I'm being given a specific task every time I come on. They said, okay, your objective is to get five rebounds and then get out. So, I'm getting on the floor to get five rebound, guard this guy for the little four, five, six minutes I have. And he under, uh, it made me understand exactly like what my other teammates are doing here, what coach tells them to do. Because I might ask more of them while they have a very specific task given to them. So we have a different role on both sides. But it definitely broaden my horizon as to understanding what everyone is what everyone is doing even though they're capable of doing multiple stuff when you're at that stage like that's your role you know your role so it did yeah and joe so come back to yourself yes you may not have a double header you've got a real 
good test at Essex level. So they've really treated me as a side. Um, I'd love to hear a bit more about what you expect from them and how maybe you guys will try to face them. Because obviously, you're not going to do that much, much just by the time we post this, be after the game. So you just go in a bit more depth if you'd like. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. This weekend, I'm not playing. I've just come off an injury from the Birmingham game. I've bruised my heel bone, so I've been out for a while. Um, Latrell's just rolled his ankle as well. So we're kind of down to guys. So we've got Kane, King and one. Uh, we've got Diogo coming in. We've got a couple of guys from the uh, lower team, the D2 and D3 team, guys stepping up. But they practice with us all the time, so they know the plays and stuff like that. Like, they're all capable of playing at the level. Um, so, yeah, I think I think it will be it will be good for them. And I think it will also be good. It will be good for the, the guys that don't really play too much to get some minutes and you know, show what they can do and stuff like that. Um, but I think we're more worried about the last four games of our season. I think that's where we need to look. They're more winnable games for us. Um, so I think, and like Dan's trying to make points, trying to rest me in the trail, because I think we're both, we both could play, but we don't want to injure ourselves and be out for the rest of the season. And if we do make playoffs, we don't want to miss that as well. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah we'll see how tomorrow goes. I'll be watching. I'll be tuned in. <laughs> I mean, happy to say, look, okay, I've got to win my games now. Just people are resting some bad guys against Essex and yeah. Derby. But I, I hear you, it's tough. Um, also, I, I've noticed, you know, you know numbers. I sometimes read into numbers, numerology. And I see with you, you have number five. And I know the All-Stars, yeah. you're all five. Is that, what's the special connection to number five for you? So, to f- five is when I got on my first basketball team. So, shout out Dave Harris. I started playing basketball at four years old. Um, and then after a year, I'm not gonna go on like I was any good or anything like that. But like I made the team. Like I was, I was waiting for I that. Could, I was like, yeah, I was I could, like, people I could dribble the ball. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I could, could, I could dribble the ball. And I could at least, I could hit the rim at least. Do you know what I mean? So that's when I joined my first team. So ever since then, five, five's just been my number for everything. Uh, you know, it's my, it's my Instagram. It's every, everything ends in fives. Right. So yeah, it's just like my lucky number at this point. Oh, that's good. And I say, you know. Now you we don't draw to why we're all here on the Friday night before Billy Richard. Joe, Joe, pick your first for your starting five. Who's gonna yeah. be your first pick for this year's twenty twenty four All Star draft? Okay. okay, my first pick is gonna have to be Victor Olerin. Uh, you know, we played on the same team for when we was at Nottingham and that, that's my guy. That has to be my first pick. It's gotta be my first pick. That's my boy, man. Got you. So there'll be a split loyalty there when you're watching the, your guys. Yeah, yeah sorry, sorry team, to but... anyone. But it's got to be. <laughs> no worries. I say the ladies, um, Ellen Trailing got first picked and she went straight for uh, how it well was a Liv Forster to really sort of steal the star player from her own club. And they went tip for tat a little bit, but it was really interesting. All right, Hakim, who's going to be your first pick for this year's draft? I'm, I'm very competitive. I'm coming to that All Star to to win the game. So Jody, I know okay, <laughs> you're a really okay. cool guy and everything, but I want to win. So I'm gonna put myself in the best position. And the person that knows me the best to do is Sam. So I think I'm gonna go with Sam. He gives yes. me the ball all the time. So I need I need someone who <laughs> who knows the how. So I'm gonna go with Sam for my first pick. It was funny, just Jordan Spencer, I think it was unrelated trick uh, treat for saying, well, the, f- the past first guy is hiding. And I think he's probably talking about NBA. And I was like, all right, are Charlie Brown and Sam Newman hide and seek with you at the moment? What, what's going on? But no reply to that. I think that went over his head until at least next year when it, they'll probably be in D1. We'll see. Joe, who you don't pick the sure, the second pick. Okay, second pick. Same same thing, same thing that Hakeem's got going. It's his teammate, he knows where he's gonna be. He know, we know how each other play, so I'm gonna go with Landon. Cause I know I know where I can find him and he's he's probably one of the best shooters in the league. He's an absolute bucket. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to pick Landon. Yeah, Landon is calling and uh Jade's <laughs> picked him up as number two. He's such a great score. Like, I yeah. think you guys are finding him, and I think maybe where maybe to stuff a little bit is the scout. I think people maybe have seen that these guys are good scorers. Do you feel like that pressure's been put on you guys a lot more now you had that great start? A bit like Birmingham in similar respects. Uh yeah, I think we I think 
most of us all have been guarded completely differently the second time we've played teams. Um, you know, they throw double teams and traps at me. That wasn't happening at the beginning of the season. Um, they're running Landon off the line completely. Um, but like I said, it's just one of the ones we just have to adjust while the game's going on. Do you know what I mean? So, but yeah, it's definitely changed from the beginning of the season. Definitely. And I'd be interested to see the All-Stars. Did God actually do play a bit of defence last few years? Yeah. So, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Haki, what's your answer to that? So there's some big picks for both of you already. Yeah, so, well, again, like I said, I'm going more fit. I'm going to go position for position again. I'm going Luke Bazumbro, I think. So that's my two guard, huh? Yeah. I'm going to go Luke, yeah. Guys, I like to pose this to you because we see a lot of sides in the off-season. And I, in my article B, when I did my little season, I thought Luke Bazumbro signed the season. Well, who would you guys say has been your NBL side of season? Oh, that's a really that's a really good question. Luke for sure is up there. Like him on the Essex team, the leadership, he does a bit of everything, his BBL pedigree. So yeah, look, I'll I'll say obviously Taylor doesn't count until we see the <laughs> end result. <laughs> but yeah, who else has been impressive? I think the Newcastle guys, huh? Have impressed me a little bit. Yeah. They're going under the radar a little bit, but the Newcastle guys definitely Definitely have impressed me. Yeah. I don't think they'll go under the radar much longer than this draft. Joe, did you say that similar to what Hakeem says aside this year? Yeah, I'd also say the Derby team. Derby team, the guys at Derby are stacked as well. You know, they got a lot of guys that can they're just flat out hoopers. Uh, but yeah, also the Essex guys, they're not guys that they're not all going to give you like 30 points, but as a team, they're really hard to guard. Like they all play so well together. So yeah. It's all yeah. love here in the chat. There's no one saying like, oh, they're not good us a lot. It's a it's definitely a nice community part, but and yeah. sorry, Joe, to take you out of your river, but who's gonna be your next one in the pick? Uh my next pick is gonna be Malcolm Smith. So, you know, I've gone with I've gone with I've got a point guard and I've got two scorers. I need myself someone that can play down in the post. And I think Malcolm's Definitely the guy for that. If Hakeem's not in, it's going to have to be Malcolm. If I can't pick Hakeem, I'm going to have to take Malcolm. You know, he can shoot a three, he can play the mid-range, he can play defence. He's, he's Yeah, he's, he's just an all-round guy. So, yeah, Malcolm Smith. Yeah. I think if there's anyone who's gets attached to find wine in a, in a statement, it's Malcolm Smith. He's definitely solely gets yeah. pushed for a tagline more often than not. Hakeem, who you doing next? I know you're, you're not pulling any punches here if he's picked, so... Um, I think I'm gonna go Corey Johnson. Like Jody um alluded to Darby being stacked, you know, they are veteran guys. So I might need a bit of uh pedigree on the wing. So I'll take Corey as my next, yeah. So um Jade, All right, I'm gonna take me uh, another absolute bucket. You know, he just came back to the league after this Christmas, gonna be Ronald Blaine. Uh got a pick run. And that's, that's one of my guys too. Uh, we've been playing for each other for uh, against each other for a while, and yeah, to have him back in the league is it, yeah, it's nice. Look forward to playing him too soon. So yeah, that'll be good. I think it's a sign of character and pedigree when someone's just come back to the league, a different team, and just start balling straight away, I'm cooking just... straight away. Yeah, yeah. No, he's been good and definitely a three-time All-Star, Henry. I... It was one of, because to say we we are invited to D one coaches to put names out. There was a few spaces, and I was like, does he or does he not because of his quality, but because of how many games he's played? But I just felt, yeah, is there anyone else in the league averaging twenty five nine and five and getting steals and blocks too? Is it, it had to be it had to be. <laughs> it's hard hard to uh to admit him a place. It's definitely not. Hakeem, who are you going to go? Because uh, that was a big pick there from uh. That was massive, yeah. <laughs> Blaine is always annoying to play again, so <laughs> I'm going to have to hang with him for ages. But uh, he seems in good shape. But uh, uh, unfortunately, I missed the game. Huh? We played them this past weekend, so I was really looking forward to that. But I was on international duty, and apparently he did damage. Like looking at the score box, so huh? again, he's always a tricky, funny player. But I do like him a lot. Really good player, a really solid player. So for my next pick, um, I can either go small ball or have a four. I think I'm going to go 
Sam Tuluasi. Oh, my God, Sam Tuluasi. Oh. Yeah. To have a bit of an inside presence, yeah, experience again. Yeah, I will go with Sam. Yeah, Sam's a bucket. And, you know, I think sometimes he's a bit underrated, but no, he's definitely an all-star. Uh, Jade? I'm going to have to go with a big Igor Stokic. Uh, Double-double machine. And like, again, another big presence inside. Um, Also, one of them players can grab boards, can shoot. So, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm going with. Definitely. I think that'd be a good one to try and sort of limit Hakeem and maybe yeah. play if they go inside. But yeah. it's hard to keep big characters quiet. So, I think both teams, and he, he's a straw too. So, it's not just about defense. So, good pick. Right, we're yeah. moving through Hakeem, who, who's next out bag? Uh, uh, I'm hesitating between Jack and Sam, but I think I'm going to go Sam Maston from Derby. Really smart, intelligent player. Easy. Know how he's doing on the court. <laughs> so I'm going to take Sam. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, that was going to be my next pick. Sam is, Sam, is, Sam is a bucket. He knows why he's, he's a, he's a yeah. great player, Sam. Yeah. Great player. <laughs> So there we go. Is that my pick? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my next pick, I'm gonna go with Justin Williams from Bradford. Also, a straight flower scorer. Um, you know, he make he make some super tough shots. Um, and I just think he, I think he's just play. He's smart. He knows what he's doing. And like I said, he can pass. He can facilitate. He can score. He, he's just yeah. He's just another great all round player. No, he's very good. And for me, Derby are really sort of one of those teams that I think will threaten later on because you've got Justin, you've got Ron, and they've also one player with really something this year. The youngster, Zion Tordoff, I think they're yeah. a triple threat, but I don't think even the first seed would like to play if, if they were having a slight off day. I think we're down to the last four. Correct me one, guys. Um, here, who you going to go for next? Um, I think I'm going to go Elijah Bailey. Like, all-star game needs to be fun. Someone who can get pocket. Like, they don't need a system run for them. He's a very, very fun fun player to watch. Like, he's really entertaining. Yeah. I'm going to go Elijah. Yeah, no, I think he had a really great all-star game. I think, I know he was one of the fans' favourite too. I know when we were doing the MVPs, I think a few fans were like, oh, I thought Elijah, they, you know, he... Really yeah. did put on the show, and I think he had some good story runs in that game. Okay, next pick. I'm gonna go with his teammate. I'm gonna go with my boy Justin Headley. Yeah. Um, you know, big guard, nice mid range, can facilitate, strong. I like Justin's one of my guys. I've been, I've probably been practicing with him every summer now for the last like four summers. So I know, I also know how he plays. Um, he kind of knows how I play, so yeah, I think I'll be play defense. Yeah, ju- yeah, going with Justin for sure. The yeah, chemistry, Mister Reliable D One, always. Yep. I don't when I look at my team, week, it's always that one person. I think he's never had a bad week, but maybe some of us had slightly better. But like, I never like, oh gosh, okay, he had a bad game. It's like, yeah, got someone more on the paper, but he's definitely a very reliable card. All right, I think now we've got four left. On Justin four earlier, I think we've got. Couple of guys still left there, but still some big names. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with Bodie. Yeah, I played him last week. Bodie is also a, a guy who can come off the bench, you know, spark a little bit the game. He's gonna shoot everything, so <laughs> it, it, it's always fun to have guys like that as well on the team. So I'm gonna go Bodie. Mm. Okay. So what does that leave? That leaves Zach. Justin and Hafiz. That's yeah, that's uh did they all pick Logan? I think there's Logan, Justin, Hopkins, Hafiz Abdul. Uh let me show you the list. Zach Paul or what? Yeah, Zach. Zach, Zach right. yeah. Yeah, Zach Powell. Now, that's gonna be my pick, the general himself. Yeah. Mr Mr. Zach Powell. You know, tough guy. Like I say, I know Zach for a long time as well. Back when he was at Manchester, um, yeah, he's he's just he's a bucket. He's gonna play hard. 
He's going to play defense. He's going to make shots. He's going to finish strong. Can facilitate. Same. Just all round player. Taking Zach Powell. Yeah, there's, there's no bad picks in this 20. There's a lot of... No, not at all. Yeah. I mean, and, and we should even say another 5 or 10 who should be in there as well. It's just it's hard to fit them all in. Yeah. All right, Hakeem, who you go know, next? Oh. So, I'm tempted to go Hafiz. Huh? <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I'll leave Hafiz for Jody because I know he will go next. I'm going to take Logan, actually. I really like Logan's game. Yeah, very clean, smooth, competitor. So I might need him end game. Yeah, yeah, Jody. I'll go for um Logan then. Logan for sure, yeah. Okay. Is the happy picking your players now, Joe, for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, happy, happy. You know, I put, I put a list in to Hakeem to say who yeah, I, who yeah. I'd like to have, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Hafiz is, Hafiz is on my list. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna take Hafiz. You know, he's a bucket. He's been a bucket. Yeah. Uh, really also, shout man. out Ch- ex Charnwood player as well. So yeah, I'm gonna have to, gonna have to go with Hafiz for that one. Yeah, Hafiz Charles. is actually my guy. I've played with him, against him for ages. Like he's a really, really cool dude. One of the few dudes like I have true love for. Yeah, in the league, Hafiz. Yeah, he's a real cool dude. Love to play against as well. Physical, does a bit of everything. You know, he's he's tough. He's tough. He's tough. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I think in the first All Stars, he, he had too much information on him to say Team Blame became Team Worthy, and there's a little <laughs> snapshot by Danny Robson Jr. And they're, they're just seeing a, a, a smile, but as a written word, she Moya, happy, and uh, Ron is like, we're going back next year with Worthy. It was a All Star. I, I did ask Sire si for a signing bonus, but still nothing happened there. I feel like I sort of gave a bit of a show and tell there, but. There's a good team being created for the first All Stars, right? Uh, I that leaves me with Justin, yep. right? Yeah, yep. to finish it off. Yeah, yeah. Not a lot. Justin's tough pick. though. Yeah, he's very tough plays. I've seen some big highlights from Justin. You know that game winner that he had. He's had he's had some tough plays, man. He's very tough. Yeah, yeah. And but it's it's like it's like you said, like no one in this, no one on this list is not good. Like I pick all the guys yeah. on this list. Yeah. And let's just put it there. The last player to pick is someone who starred for the Newcastle Eagles in the European Northern Basketball League. And he, he exactly. put the show. So, exactly. He's probably thinking, Chris, I should have gone a lot higher. But I think the guys are playing a little bit. A bit of a uh, yeah. uh, poker face, sort of picking players, sort of counter threats of others, yeah. trying to raise the stakes. But it's been great picks. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, it's really two good teams, like you said. It's a bunch of people that can that can play. They know the game, you know. Yeah, they know what they're doing. So it will be fun. Two solid teams. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Same here. Same like, here. Uh, and to you guys watching, I really hope we confirm venues soon. We're sort of at that ninety percent stage, and then I'll push other things. I feel like I want to hold stuff back so we get the location. Does I say on that pet show location, location, location? And all the other things fit in place, but I'm really excited. We've got some, we've got a music attack confirmed, which I'm really excited about. Uh, DJ with MBL links. I'm not sorry, DJ, uh, a rap artist with MBL links. And um, I'm really excited, especially for to do venue. I think it'll give fresh ideas, and I think it's so to really put something on the show. Guys, you've both been involved in different ways in the All Stars. What are some of the things that you've enjoyed from the previous editions? Um, uh, I I enjoyed. Sorry, I was waiting for you, man. Um, I think I think it's just nice to just have everyone around each other. You know? I think everyone like just talking because sometimes, like like me, when I come against my guys, you know, I like to talk a little bit. I talk a little bit of smack and stuff like that. So it's nice to just like be around the guys and like even if we're not talking basketball, it's just good to like catch up and get to know the guys outside of basketball. I think and like just the whole kind of environment and the community around there is just really nice. Yeah, British Basketball United is a great thing. And I think it's something nice to have, like, players you go up against beyond your your team. Yeah. And I think it helps grow the sport because, you know, for the average fan who's like a diehard Hebel fan, they'll all, to take an example, there's lots of other yeah. leads, they're rooting their guys night and day. And maybe sometimes they're, like, rooting to 
and not really thinking much about the opposition. But like, okay, actually, I like this time. And next year, like, yeah. okay, shot of three. Okay, I might delay the trash talk a little go and <laughs> enjoy it. But and it just gets more people talking. I think it's that's a great thing to have, and it brings you all guys together. Like, I just we appreciate everyone's support. And you guys buying in, the fans buying in, you know, two years sold out of Solent. Looking forward to the next venue. Uh, obviously, thanks again, you guys. Friday evening, both taking time out of your busy schedules. Joan, obviously, get well soon. Thank you very and much. Key, good luck for the second leg. When's the second international window, for anyone wondering? That's... Um, probably it will be either November or February. So it's not confirmed yet, huh? but it will be November or February. And during the summer, we have like some friendly game we have planned. So I've already received a letter of invitation for that. So I will have to see with family and everything going on how to make that work. But other than that, yeah, I'm looking forward to going back again. You know, the intense training, like twice a day, the conditioning, recovery. So just to have that professional attitude, mentality a little bit for a week or two. Because or, when I did the Afro Basket in 2018 or 2019, was it? So we went in a camp for like a month where we had a dietitian, we had everything. So that's as close as to a professional you can get, like practicing twice a day, doing a lot of videos. They put like five, six plays in a day, like that so you have to catch up quick. So yeah, so there was a lot going on. And I'm always like, and the jersey as well, representing your country always has a special feel to it. Like it's different, it's different. You have a sense of pride, you have, it's, it's emotional. It's an emotional part of it. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to that the summer and then the second leg of the of the qualifiers. But we have guys that are playing in the Pro A in France. They're playing in Spain Division, eight the ABC in Spain, in Turkey. So a lot of them were had like little injuries. That's why they didn't come this time. But next like next window, hopefully everyone will be there full strength, and then we'll see what we can do. But all fun, you know. I mean, being part of the NBL and represent the NBL on the other side, and vice versa. So it's always fun. <laughs> I can imagine. Final question, for both of you guys. Obviously, B dropped their awards they do for like the people who work really hard behind the scenes. You're both part of two well worked rosters. Our team is there like words for the people who work behind the scenes and the fans for Hebel going into this busy off um final stretch of hope games before playoffs and obviously the playoffs. Anything you'd like to say to them is sort of thanks for their services these so far. Oh my God, the list is so long. I don't even know how to start. Like uh, all the volunteers for the club, the club is so well run, you know. You have people putting hours and hours to make those games happen. So a lot happens behind the scenes. Like we don't have the the number one fans, I would say, in the country for no reason. Like a lot is going on. I really, well, like us players, we really appreciate everything they do. So it's all love. It's like a big family. That's what I love about him all a lot. It's uh, it has that family that word that they're not throwing around no? they actually do mean it when they say it. we're all part of the same family so yeah they're putting a lot of work um, the venue to get the games ready even when we're going away a lot of fans travel with us so we, we're we thankful and grateful to be part of, of, of an organisation like that I'm sure it's the same for Nottingham as well it's yeah. always a fun crowd when we're up there yeah same for you Joe do you know lots of I say a lot of people behind the scenes that put on our tireless effort to help <clears> you guys put on the show fans. Anyone you want to say thanks to or just a general message of thanks? Yeah, no, 100% same as Hakeem. The, the list is too long to say. I can't thank everyone. We'll be here, we'll be here all night. So I just had nurse, same thing. All the volunteers that are like, doing things, going out of their way, even guys that like, aren't getting paid, people that aren't getting paid, people doing video in, people coming early to set up the courts, you know, the guys that are Wildcats sorting everything out. So, yeah, fans, everyone, just thank you. Even the people that aren't part of Nottingham Hoods, you know, even all the guys at the other clubs that are helping out behind behind the scenes and stuff that we don't really see too much about. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'd like to add to that. that you know, there's other brands like this. Great to see a second NBL, NBL fix. Great work they're doing. Love what they've yeah. done this year. Great to get Derby as far graphics. You've got some great videographers. Lauren, who does for England. Luke, of course, with uh, Rockets. There's so many, too many to name. Yeah. What's that? I should have stopped. Um, but yes, there's so many <laughs> people like, Chris, why is it not much me? I was like, I'm sorry, there's so many. And it definitely feels it's growing year on year. And I think that helps make the game better. And, you know, we've seen, you know, players step up to BBL and hopefully that will continue. Again, 
thank you everyone for coming on and I hope you all watched it and enjoyed the draft show. Get treat who you think is going to win, who you're looking forward to, and not long now, just un- over two months. So we'll see you all soon. Take care and bye for myself, Hakeem and Joe. Stay safe, everyone. Thank, thank you, everyone. Cheers. Wow, guys. There you have it. Our all-star talents made the all-star picks for the 2024 rebound all-star games. I'm really looking forward to both games. But I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments which team you think will come out on top on the 15th of May. And also any interesting storylines you think might arise from this year's games. And let's not forget in the debut event, both games were really close, with the ladies needing overtime to settle the, the score. And in the, <clears throat> in the men, Taylor Johnson, with a really three point down in the final few seconds, called game and get the dub. One of the interesting taglines for the first event was that the following season, Team Blaine, uh, Captain Wallows Blaine, Seemed to be picking what was only his Worthing Thunder squad for next season. As a lot of guys he picked for the All Stars end up being his teammates at Worthing Thunder. Now, as I said, halfway through the show, I'll address where we're at in terms of putting on the event for the third Rebound All Stars. Some of you may know, but this year we've had, had some problems trying to secure a court a venue for. The showcase event. I know other event players having similar problems across the country, um, especially. I think the main issue with this year's event is finding venue that's available on the day, with a lot of universities using that weekend for exams. Um, I've had some really good conversations this week, and I really believe that next week, before before the um, try to now Friday the twenty second, we will have that location locked in for you. In terms of getting other updates out, I've really wanted to structure it in a way that the location was the next biggest thing we dropped. But behind the scenes, we were getting things in place and I, I'm i really excited we'd have the kit drop next to it. We don't have the three-point contest contestants, the skills contestants and the dunk contestants as well as so our head coach will start to be announced from next week as well as we get down to less than two months before the event. Any questions, drop in comments or reach out to social media. I'll try to answer them all as we get towards what will be the third event. Following us announcing the location, within the week after that announcement, tickets will go on sale. All the details for that and more, you can find our Rebound all Start Instagram page first. I'll also share it across social media and we'll get news out to all the independent media companies and Barcelona and NBL. So hopefully it'll be impossible to miss. Uh, a final message to myself. Look, I really appreciate all the support um, that you guys have for this All Stars event. <clears throat> you know, since the first one, you know, we got over 300 fans since the SSC. And, you know, we got, I think it was a four-figure, I can't remember the actual number now, watching the live stream was a massive number for the NBL, an NBL event. And then last year, of course, we sold out the SSC and posted similar numbers on the YouTube stream. Again, this channel will be hosting the game. More details coming soon. And also, apologies, I would lo- love to have more information out sooner, but I just want to let you know I work as hard as I can to make sure the third year is just as much a success as the last two have been. So stay safe, stay locked in, and we'll get more information to you soon. I'm really excited. We're less too much away. Uh, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>